Who was the inventor of the fabulous printing press? And what was the reason for its astonishing success? It was in the German city of Aachen in 1439 that Johann Gutenberg's investors had put their money on the line. But after the failure of his latest money-making plan, they wanted all their money back from that indebted man. They confronted the nervous merchant, sweat glistening on his brow, threatening all the sanctions that the law courts would allow. He should pay them back immediately, or must say when and how. If ever there was a time for a good idea, that time was surely now. Printing, said Gutenberg to their disbelieving looks, by which I mean the mechanical preparation of a book. His creditors were frowning. Was he as crazy as he seemed? Was there profit in a book-making, money-making scheme? I don't mean using blocks of wood to print patterns onto cloth, or inking wooden etchings so the pictures will rub off. I mean making lots of letters out of metal all the same, using them to build a page to print and use again. By using a simple hand mould, we can make standard letters cheaply, and a screw press like we use for wine could print out pages neatly. We could do a copy of the Bible or some shorter stuff for starters. His investors said, it had better work or we'll have your guts for garters. In the two years it would take a scribe to copy out a Bible, 180 could be made by this mass production rival. Gutenberg went to his grave with his successes unrecorded, and we don't know if his creditors' investments were rewarded. But the printing press gave the written word to ordinary civilians as the number of books quickly rose from the thousands into millions, drove the Renaissance, the Reformation, and scientific revolution. The technology stayed much the same till the Industrial Revolution. How come it was in Europe that the printing press appears, when in Asia woodblock printing had been known about for years? Block printing books and banknotes was China's big idea, while the first inventors of metal type lived in the kingdom of Korea. Europeans using feather quills used thicker paper than in China, where they painted characters with a brush onto paper that was finer. While stronger paper was the best that a printing press could get, a more important difference was the use of an alphabet. Developed in ancient times and spread by the Phoenicians, the alphabet was modified by the Romans and the Grecians. It was the ideal tool where different languages were heard, a compact and easy way to write the sounds of any word. It needs thousands of ideograms to write a Chinese book, but for European literature, a few dozen letters is all it took. Movable metal typography was too complex in the East, but in the West the cost of books could be rapidly decreased. It's Gutenberg who's credited with inventing the printing press, but it's the alphabetical Phoenicians we can thank for its success. Hello, hello. This looks familiar, eh? Everybody seems to be talking into a little black box with a pin on the top. And just one man is responsible for all this talking. His name is Alexander Graham Bell. He was a teacher from Scotland, but lived most of his life in the USA. He was fascinated with the new invention, the telegraph that could send messages through telegraph lines as electrical impulses. He wondered if it might be possible to send the human voice as electrical impulses as well. Just like a vibrating metal plate, he figured that the human voice also consists of vibrations. He built a simple device and called his assistant, Thomas Watson, in the next room. The world's first phone call took place on March 10th 1876. Bell got a patent for his invention, and today it's considered the most valuable patent in the whole world. Talking on the phone is big, big business today, with all kinds of technical gizmos handling our talk in the little black box with the pin on top. 
But Alexander Bell also experimented with a lot of other stuff. He tried to build a kite that could carry a man. He invented the photophone, a phone that transmitted voice by using a light beam. And he also built a hydrofoil boat that set a record of 75 miles per hour in 1919. Today, the whole world seems to be talking to each other all day long, either from the other side of the globe or just around the corner. Who knows? One day, you might even be talking with your new friend from outer space. So next time you babble with one of your friends, please send a friendly thought to Alexander Graham Bell, the ingenious inventor and a great human being. Radio. You know, that old dusty thing that sits up at the front of your car or in the corner of your house? Most of us are too occupied with television, our iPods, or video games to really listen to it. But the impact it has had on our world is immense. It all started in 1873 when James Clerk Maxwell showed mathematically that electromagnetic waves could travel through air. Before long, in 1888, Heinrich Hertz demonstrated Maxwell's theory by demonstrating that someone could produce and detect electromagnetic radiation. Then, in 1892, Nikola Tesla used Maxwell's mathematic findings to demonstrate the sending and receiving of radio frequency energy. He proposed that this method could be used for sending and receiving information. But it was Guglielmo Marconi who built the first wireless transmitter in 1896, which was capable of sending signals up to one and a half miles. He then proceeded to develop the world's first transatlantic radio communication service between Clifton, Ireland, and Newfoundland in 1901. The next evolution in radio technology was the invention of the spark gap transmitter. This device allowed for the production of the first commercially available radio sets, but the spark gap radios were plagued with problems, mainly electrical interference. These were greatly improved with the invention and production of crystal radio sets. The crystal sets were the first widely produced and widely used radio sets in America. These crystal sets were widely used in most American homes by the 1920s. It was the American family's connection to the rest of the country. This was fantastic, but there was still a problem that needed to be fixed. Up to this time, all radio was being broadcast using AM waves. AM stands for Amplitude Modulation. But the problem was that AM radio is medium range and is prone to be blocked by urban structures. But in 1933, Edwin H. Armstrong invented FM radio. FM stands for frequency modulation. This type of broadcasting method uses a wavelength that is less prone to static and blockage. It also has a longer range. With the invention of FM, radio only needed one more evolution to become what you know today. That last advancement was the transistor radio. The transistor radio had particular advantages over the old crystal sets. The transistor sets were much cheaper than the crystal ones, used less power, had a smaller size, and had a very long lifespan. Sometimes people want to know, where did the internet, where did GPS, where did all these wonders come from? Did the Pentagon invent these things so that teenagers can communicate with each other? Well, it goes back to the Cold War. Back then, the Pentagon gave us scientists a mission. First, to communicate with other scientists to rebuild America during and after a nuclear confrontation with the Soviet Union. Second, to guide missiles to within 100 feet accuracy of the Kremlin. 
And third, to be able to have the President of the United States teleconference with all his chief of staff, even if he's in Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado Springs, underneath a gigantic mountaintop. Well, that was a tall order. But the network that we created so that other scientists could rebuild America after World War III, that began the Internet. And the system to locate missiles as they are on the way to the Kremlin within 100 feet accuracy, hey, that's the GPS system. And the way the President of the United States would communicate with his chief of staff, that became telepresence. It was male dominated. It was about winning a nuclear war against the Soviet Union. But today, let's face it, the internet is female. It's about touching people. It's about being able to influence the lives of other people. The GPS system, telepresence, the internet, all of it was created in the cauldron of war. And yet today, it's used by mothers to track their kids, by teenagers to make contact with each other. It's really an instrument of peace, togetherness, and unity.